Thank you. It's a warm, sunny day. I've just arrived to my parents' house for a visit, and my dad is lying on the sofa doing some work. He's got his laptop on his knees. Everything is in peace and in harmony. Until suddenly, he picks up his laptop and starts shaking it to the point where I think he might even throw it across the room. And I look and I say, what, what's going on? And he says, it won't do the thing I need it to do. I don't understand it. And he's so frustrated and so confused by this, by this device. And I think to myself, why, why is this happening? What's the problem? And many of us today, myself included, feel this experience with our technology, with our devices, where we feel like it doesn't understand us and we don't understand it. And it's not that surprising if you think about it. Because to some extent, it feels like there are these users of technology, which is actually, that's us. And then there are the people who are making technology. And in my case, that sometimes it's me also. But there's no bridge, there's no channel between the two of us to be able to have some sort of a dialogue back and forth. No place for informal or common language. And this is the issue that I want us to reflect on today. Why is there no channel? And is there a way for us to forge one between these two communities who often are, in a way, working together constantly, actually? Would it be possible for us to rethink ourselves as opposed to being these passive users, just accepting what's coming at us, and instead be active participants demanding the ability to give input and reflect and wonder about the technology that's being created. And if we give that input and that thought, could it be incorporated and then change the technology that we're using every day and that's actually shaping our experiences? We see the potential of that kind of participation in our daily physical world. Every day, maybe you, you walk out, out your door to your car, to your bike, and if that street that you're walking out onto is, let's say, starting to become quite full of potholes or really noisy, you have an idea in mind about how you might say something back to, to the system around you. Maybe it's your local politician or uh, someone else. The point is you have an idea of how you can make change, how you can participate as an active citizen in your physical world. The system's kind of mapped out in your mind, right? But when you think of the digital services that you're using every day, or the devices that you're constantly on, ah, I don't know, who, who is behind them? Like, who are the people, what are their faces like, who are, who are actually making the changes that you are then experiencing. So whereas in your physical world, you might actually see the potholes being filled if you submit a complaint or if you uh, somehow call attention to this issue. In your digital world, first of all, who would you submit that position to? Okay, beyond just a, an error or a complaint like that, something more thoughtful. Who would, you, who would you talk to? Who is your elected representative who might speak on your behalf? I don't, I don't see any opportunity for us to have that kind of a dialogue at this moment. But I want us to open that dialogue. I want us to create this kind of channel between the two for more informal thinking about how we might change technology and make it better for us, for what we want, instead of this kind of mysterious list of needs and wants that is not necessarily directly coming from you and me. Let's imagine for a moment 
Okay, when, when was the last moment that you actually observed a change happening in your technology? Do you remember? It was probably something like a, an alert or an update that said, you need to do this because otherwise this won't work. And if you looked underneath it, maybe you saw a few details, right? Like, uh, now things will be faster. And you're like, okay, yeah, sure, fine. Go back to making your dinner or whatever, folding laundry. You don't want to deal with it. It's a distraction. It's not an invitation to actually contribute, to participate in a dialogue about how this app or this service or this device is trying to change to improve your life. It's not an invitation, rather. It's just kind of a push, right? Do this now. Otherwise, I don't know. So this is what I would like us to try to rethink together. Could we open up a space where we could have more like a wondering about how things could be? as opposed to simply having this change log, which is currently a place where changes to our applications or services are documented. This change log of kind of major updates or whatever, not really in our language often. Could we have something like a wonder log where we are able to actually mm, think more openly and say to one another, oh, what if it were like this? And that what if the creators of technology on their side could actually also just as openly and just as kind of honestly say, hey, we're thinking about making this kind of a change or we're wondering how this might affect your life. What do you think? Could we open that up? So that we're not just accepting our technology as this, this block of kind of chrome and, and glass that we're a bit afraid to touch because otherwise it might break. Or we're super frustrated with because we don't understand it. Instead, could we think of it as this place where we could actually participate, that we could form, that we could shape, that's not finished. In fact, it's quite unfinished and it's constantly being remade and constantly being rethought. But I want to invite all of us into that dialogue of rethinking. So these are two projects that I would maybe put on our wonder log. Um, to start with, I'm, the first one is just a thought project with all of us. So imagine that tonight you got home and you saw that Google Maps, let's say, had just sent you an update. Now your ride will be smoother. And you think to yourself, okay, great, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna finish making dinner. Well, what if instead you looked underneath it and it said something like, your ride is gonna be smoother because we're only gonna send you on paved roads. Okay, how does that make you feel? And just like take one moment to think about that. Is it okay with you? Could it be better? Is that actually the situation that you would like Google Maps to be working so hard on for you? Only to send you on paved roads. Because for me, sometimes I actually like to take the dirt road or the less traveled road or the more peaceful road. And I think that I should have a way to control this application who is controlling which direction I know to take. Let's say if I'm in an unknown city, I'm just trying to get a feel for it. What if that unknown city then, the only way I'm navigating through it is on paved roads? I see the same thing as everyone else will see, right? And is that okay with me? Maybe it is. But I should think about it, I think. I should wonder about it. So I'd like to add something like that to my wonder log. Then um, I'd like to share with you something called unfit bits, which I'm going to propose we put on our wonder log, where you could actually attach your step counter, 
like your Fitbit, to a metronome or a pendulum or a power drill or a bicycle. And you can see where we're going with this, right? So, in so doing, you generate a huge amount of fake data that then makes you look like a fitness rock star. And you send that over to your healthcare insurance company who gives you great discounts and benefits and all the rest. Perfect, right? I'm not saying you all need to go buy unfit bits. But what I'm suggesting and what I'm hopefully inspiring you to do is think about how our current technology is and think about how you might want it to be and how you might kind of expose these seams between the two. Another project, Objectifier, allows you to control the world around you in the way that you want to control it. So when he opens his book, his reading light turns on. When he closes it, it turns off. Or, he's able to control his record player by kind of making the record go, right? And actually, this is, this is a real working product. And again, it's not necessarily something that you're about to go out and buy, but it makes you think differently about the current existing technology that you're using and how it fits into your life and whether it's the experience that you actually want. And if not, maybe you could actually make your record player controllable by, uh, you know, DJing or whatever this guy is doing. So this is what I'm hoping for you today, that you think of yourself as being a participant in the technology that you use every day, as opposed to being a user. And secondly, that you think of the technology that you're using as something that's changeable, that's sculptable, that can evolve and adapt according to who you are and what you need. I heard that uh, the Danish politician Sven Alken said about politics, don't threaten to leave, threaten to stay. And I think we should do the same for technology. We don't have to leave, let's stay. But let's not just stay, let's notice. Let's, let's actually become critical, and not just critical, but constructive and imaginative and wonder, and then let's add that to the wonder log. Thank you. <laughs>